Hello, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Pecora back to read to you from our novel, Flora and Ulysses, The Illuminated Adventures, written by Kate D. Camillo. So sit back, relax, and enjoy chapter 17. I smell squirrel. Oh, hold on, boys and girls. Let me push this down just a little bit. There we go. There was a boy at the door. He was short and his hair was so blonde that it looked almost white. His eyes were hidden behind enormous dark glasses. In addition to terrible things can happen to you, the illuminated adventures of the amazing Incandesto regularly featured a second bonus comic entitled The Criminal Element is Among Us. The criminal element gave very specific pointers on how to never ever be fooled by a criminal. And one of the oft-repeated dictums of the criminal element was that the best way to get to know a person was to look him or her directly in the eye. Flora tried to look the boy in the eye, but all she saw was a reflection of herself in his dark glasses. She looked short and uncertain, like an accordion in pajamas. Well, yum, said Tootie. Tootie, I told you to stay put. I heard screaming said the boy. His voice was high and thin. I was concerned. I came as fast as I could. Unfortunately, on the way over here, I had a small but extremely violent encounter with some variety of shrub, and now I am bleeding. I think I am bleeding. I'm pretty sure I smell blood, but no one should be concerned. Please don't overreact. This, said Tootie, is my nephew. Great nephew, said the boy, and I hope I don't need stitches. Do you think I need stitches? His name is William, said Tootie. William Spiver, exactly, said Tootie's nephew. I prefer to be called William Spiver. It distinguishes me from the multiplicity of Williams in the world. He smiled. It is a pleasure to meet you, whoever you are. I would shake your hand, but as I said, I think I am bleeding. Also, I'm blind. You are not blind, said Tootie. I am suffering from a temporary blindness induced by trauma, said William Spiver. Temporary blindness induced by trauma. The word sent a chill down Flora's spine. Seemingly, there was no end to things that could go wrong with human beings. Why hadn't terrible things can happen to you done an issue on temporary blindness induced by trauma? Or, for that matter, on one one on extended hallucinations. I am temporary blind, said William Spiver again. How unfortunate, said Flora's mom. He's not blind, said Tootie, but as of this morning, he is staying with me for the summer. Imagine my surprise and excitement. I have nowhere else to go, great aunt Tootie, said William Spiver. You know that I am at the mercy of the winds of fate. Oh, said Flora. She Flora's mother, she clapped her hands. How wonderful, a little friend for Flora. I don't need a little friend, said Flora. Of course you do, said her mother. She turned to Tootie. Flora is very lonely. She spends far too much time reading comics. I've tried to break her the habit, but I'm very busy with my novel writing and she is alone a lot. I'm worried that it has made her strange. I'm not strange, said Flora. This seemed like a safe statement to make when someone as truly profoundly strange as William Spiver was standing next to her. I would happy, be happy to be your friend, said William Spiver. Honored, he bowed. How lovely, said Flora's mother. Yes, said Flora, how lovely. The blind, said William Spiver, even the temporary blind, have an excellent sense of smell. Oh, for heaven's sake, said Tootie. Here we go. I have to tell you that I smell something out of the ordinary, something that is not usually smelled within the confines of the human domestic sphere, said William Spiver. He cleared his throat. I smell squirrel. Squirrel? Confronted with the spectacle of William Spiver, they had forgotten about Ulysses. Flora and her mother and Tootie all turned and looked at Ulysses. He was still on top of Mary Ann. He had managed to balance himself on the small blue and green globe that was at the center of the lampshade. That squirrel, said Flora's mother. He's rabid diseased. He's got to go. 
Chapter 18, A Scientific Adventure. Why don't you let me take the squirrel, Tootie said to Flora's mother. I'll just return him to the wild. If you can call the backyard the wild, said William Spiver. Hush up, William, said Tootie. She reached out for Ulysses. Don't touch it, shrieked Flora's mother. No without gloves, it has some sort of disease. If you could just get me some gloves then, said Tootie. I'll pluck the squirrel off the lampshade and whisk him out of here and set him free. The kids can come along. It will be a scientific adventure. It doesn't sound very scientific to me, said William Spiver. Well, said Flora's mother, I don't know. Flora Bell's father is coming to pick her up for their Saturday visit. He'll be here any minute now, and she's still in her pajamas. Flora Bell, said William Spiver. What a lovely, melodious name. It will just take a minute, said Tootie in a low, soothing voice. The kids can get to know each other. I'll get you some gloves, said Flora's mother. And so... Now, here they were, walking over to Tootie's, getting to know each other, or something. Tootie had on a pair of dishwashing gloves that went all the way up to her elbows. The gloves were bright pink, and they glowed in a cheery, radioactive sort of way. In Tootie's gloved hands was Ulysses. Behind Tootie was Flora, and next to Flora was William Spiver. His left hand rested on her shoulder. Do you mind, Flora Bell, he said, had said, would it trouble you terribly if I put my hand on your shoulder and allowed you to guide me back to Great Aunt Tootie's house? The world is a treacherous place when you can't see. Flora didn't bother pointing out to him that the world was a treacherous place when you could see. And speaking of treacherousness, things were not in any way progressing as Flora had planned. She had envisioned Ulysses fighting crime, criminals, villainy, darkness, treachery. She had imagined him flying, holy bagumba! through the world with her, Flora Buckman, at his side. Instead, here she was leading a temporarily blind boy through her own backyard. It was anticlimactic, to say the least. Have you released the squirrel yet, Great Aunt Tootie? No, said Tootie, I have not. Why do I sense that there is more going on here than meets the eye, said William Spiver. Just keep quiet till we get back to the house, William, said Tootie. Can you do that? Keep quiet for a minute? Of course I can said William Spiver. He sighed. I'm an old pro at keeping quiet. Flora doubted very much that this was true. William Spiver squeezed her shoulder. May I inquire how old you are, Flora Bell? Don't squeeze my shoulder. I'm 10. I am 11 years old, said William Spiver, which surprises me, I must say. I feel much, much older than 11. Also, I know for a fact that I am smaller than your average 11-year-old. It may even be that I'm shrinking. Excessive trauma can retard growth. I'm not certain, however, if it can cause actual shrinkage. What was the traumatic event that turned you blind, said Flora. I'd prefer not to discuss it right now. I don't want to alarm you. It's not possible to alarm me, said Flora. I'm a cynic. Nothing in human nature surprises a cynic. So you say, said William Spiver. The word cryptic popped into Flora's head. It was preceded by the word unnecessarily. Unnecessarily cryptic, said Flora out loud. I beg your pardon, said William Spiver. But then they were at Tootie's house. They were walking through her backyard and into her kitchen, which smelled like bacon and lemons. Tootie put Ulysses down on the table. I don't understand, said William Spiver. We're back at your house, but I can still smell the squirrel. Flora took the paper out of her pajamas. She handed it to Tootie. She felt like a spy, a successful spy, a triumphant spy. I'll bet a spy in pajamas. What's this? said Tootie. It's proof that you aren't the victim of an extended hallucination, said Flora. Tootie held the paper with both hands. She stared at it. Squirrel, she said. Squirrel, said William Spiver. Keep reading, said Flora. Squirrel, said Tootie. I am Ulysses born anew. See, said Flora. What does that prove, said William Spiver. What does it even mean? The squirrel's name is Ulysses, said Tootie. Wait a minute, said William Spiver. Are you positing that the squirrel typed those words? Positing? Positing? Yes, said Flora. That's exactly what I'm positing. The hallucination extends, said Tootie. What hallucination? asked William Spiver. The squirrel as a superhero hallucination, said Tootie.
Surely you jest, said William Spiver. Ulysses sat up on his hind legs. He looked at William Spiver and then at Tootie, and finally he turned his eyes to Flora. He raised his eyebrows and gave her a look full of questions, full of hope. Flora felt a pang of doubt. He was, after all, just a squirrel. She had no proof that he was a superhero. What if there were some other explanation for those words? Also, there was Tootie's disturbing point to consider. What kind of superhero types? And then she thought about Alfred, how everyone doubted him, how no one except the parakeet Dolores knew that he was in Candesto, and how no one except Dolores truly believed in him. Was it Flora's job to believe in Ulysses? What did that make her, a parakeet? Let me get this straight, said William Spiver. You, a self-professed cynic, are positing that the squirrel is a superhero. The words, do not hope, instead observe, flitted through Flora's brain. She took a deep breath. She brushed the phrase away. The squirrel typed those words, she said. Well, said William Spiver, whose hand was still on Flora's shoulder. Why didn't he move his hand back? Let's just approach this scientifically. We'll put the squirrel in front of Great Aunt Tootie's computer and we'll ask him to type again. All right, boys and girls, we're going to stop there for today. Stay tuned to see what happens next in our novel. Have a great day.